Hey, you're, hey. you're going to put a green test. Oh, and then it Hello. Test. Noah Morales. Noah. Hello. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Board of Education meeting for October 24th, 2023. Uh, would you all please stand as you are able for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. I noticed I didn't have to tell you to be seated. Um, we are going to try something tonight and going forward at these Board of Education meetings. We're going to try to carve out some time to, uh, to recognize and celebrate remarkable achievements by our students in a variety of fields, athletics, uh, academics, the arts. And tonight, I'm going to just, uh, this will be repeated a few times, but I would like to recognize on behalf of the board the Saline High School varsity football team at the SEC championship winners, and uh, Dr. Lotch will fill in the rest of the holes. That's right. Welcome, everyone. So this year, the Saline football team was undefeated in league play and won an outright SEC championship. This is the, oh, okay. Oh, the applause line. Okay, applause line. 
You can clap multiple times. Uh, this represents the 10th SEC championship in 12 years, which is really remarkable. Uh, the team set individual game school record for points and shut out four league opponents and held another one to just seven points while averaging over 40 points a game themselves. This team is hopeful for a very successful postseason run and another year of academic all-state success. And Saline football team would like to thank the Board of Education and administration for its continued support. Now, I would note that head coach Joe Polka is unable to attend tonight because he's at a coaches association meeting to help select the all region team. But we do have some other coaches here tonight and we're gonna ask uh, the coaches to come up first and introduce themselves and their role on the team. And then we'd like each player to come up also to the microphone and state your name and what your role on the team is, what your position is. So we'll go ahead and start with the coaches, thanks. And then a group photo after. Okay, good call. Uh, my name is Marty Walsh, and I actually, it's my first year back in a while, and I coach the cornerbacks. My name is Michael Lyle, and this is my 12th year here, and I coach the offensive line. CJ Carr, I'm a senior, and I play quarterback. I'm Zane Issa, I'm a senior, I'm a running back. Uh, Nick Sotheby, senior, offensive line. Ian Furlong, senior, punter. John Otis, senior, offensive line. Noah Bonner, receiver. Uh, Miller Grambo, senior, wide receiver. Ryan Block, offensive line. Uh, Isaiah Gifford, offensive line. Uh, Ryan Cavanaugh, uh, linebacker. Uh, Dylan Messman, tight end. Josh Folk, receiver. Peyton Wyden, safety. Uh, Keegan Ewert, defensive back. Cade Fox, receiver. Sounds like everybody. <laughs> We want to do a quick picture, so do you want to do it, Jackie? What kind of? Let's organize right here in the front area by the um, TV area. And we also want to wish the team good luck against Pioneer on Friday. Go Hornets. You can be in there to I'm not standing
we'll get the uh, photo ops down to a science after we do this a few more times. So thank you. Um, this is time for the public comment. A member of the public may address the board. Oh, quick check. We're going to skip on public comment because you guys had nothing to say this evening, at least at this part of the meeting. There will be another chance later. Um, there are no, oh, uh, we do have, is uh, Kenyatta Hughes here? We have two uh, brief extended comments. Uh, come on up, you are first. Uh, Kenyatta Hughes, principal of Pleasant Ridge Elementary School, uh, will speak first. And we will refrain from making comments, so. Period. Period. <laughs> Good evening. I'm often asked when they see how short I am and how young I look. I look young, right? I am, I am old enough and qualified to be a principal. Um, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to kind of talk to you a little bit about some of the great things that's happening at Pleasant Ridge. Um, I'm so delighted to report that the 2022-2023 school year at Pleasant Ridge has started off on a very positive note. Here are some key highlights. Um, our third grade students have taken on the role of safeties, serving as leaders within our school community. Um, Socktober was a resounding success with our student council encouraging the communi community to donate socks for those in need and partnering with Celine Social Services for this initiative. We're thrilled to be launching our new science curriculum, Mystery Science, which has our teaching staff excited for these engaging lessons ahead. Our largest fundraiser, called this year Booking It Fun Run, exceeded expectations by reaching our goal of $20,000. It was a fantastic event and we are incredibly thankful for the unwavering support of our community and the PTA. A portion of these funds will be allocated updating our library inventory. We've also started and initiate, initiated our Alphabet for Humanity, which is a word study program um, that aims to inspire kindness, compassion, and love among our students. Weekly activities will reinforce these principles. We are actively teaching our students the high five tenets, helping them lead their day the Pleasant Ridge way. This is a motto that Mrs. Hughes has brought to the Pleasant Ridge community. We lead our day the Pleasant Ridge way, which our students are aware of what that looks like and sounds like throughout not just our school, but our community as well. We are a Pleasant Ridge student 365 days of the year. Um, fall field trips are in full swing with students visiting Apple Orchards, Benny's Bakery, and our one room schoolhouse here in Saline. Our school speech pathologists are implementing a new social skills program in collaboration with Everyday Speech, thanks to the Celine Foundation grant. We are excited about the valuable resources and videos that are available to us through this avenue. Our dedicated staff is trying something different and we are thriving together with team building activities. We've already had some great activities to kind of kick the year off with a smoothie day, multiple birthday breakfasts, and yoga, and a scavenger hunt in the near future for exciting events to come. Our Pleasant Ridge community is united in our commitment to providing an enriching educational experience for our students. We thank you for your continued support, and we are looking forward to a wonderful, successful year ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Hughes, uh, Principal Hughes. I'd like to call up Cameron Cochran, Kristen Hoffman, Peter, the co-chairs of the CAB, the Sex Education Advisory Board. Kristen and I will not be taking any photo opportunities during this meeting. We're going to get right into it. Um, so we do have some slides that we wanted to share with you um, regarding uh, some of the form submissions we sent out over the past uh, month or so, uh, parent feedback form about the body safety talks. Those were presented on the previous two board meetings. So families were sent that this form um, in building-wide email communications. Um, we received 19 form submissions. Um, you can see that of those 19, a large majority of those uh, respondents were for parents uh, who have students in young fives through third grade. So 
obviously our target audience there. Uh, we had some other feedback from folks with children in the older grades as well. So of the 19 respondents, 14 of those were with um, families in young fives through third grade. And then of those young fives through third grade respondents, 13 out of the 14 rated the BST curriculum based on what they saw um, at the previous board meetings as important or very important. Both the week one um, general safety talk and then the week two presentations which are preventing that child sexual abuse. Uh, the 14th respondent was neutral and just wanting some more information and had some questions. So the board also has access to the slides as well as the specific form submissions that were sent in um, on the form. So the questions that we pulled out here, I uh, just wanted to address those to make sure what everybody's on the same page. Is this taught every year? Uh, the Washington Area Council for Children who will be facilitating the body safety talks recommends that this program is taught every year. Um, that is going to be a conversation that's, um, you know, a, a part of that conversation will be led by our building administrators at the young fives through third grade. So Ms. Hughes, Ms. Sickler, and Ms. Washington. Um, they will help determine um, based on the needs of their building and their students. Is this curriculum the same every year? Um, the question was specifically regards to kindergartners versus what first graders and second graders and third graders receive. It is the same curriculum every year. Um, again, that has been researched and, and um, found to be effective for all of those grade levels. Is this program evidence-based and effective? Um, yes, the Washington Area Council for Children uh, does state that that is evidence-based and effective. They linked the survey during their presentation um, and their study on that. Uh, is there consideration for those with learning differences and or adaptive materials to accommodate multiple approaches? So a really good question there. Um, to which we would say that the building administrators, classroom teachers, and special ed case managers will be working with the Washington Area Council for Children to ensure that the needs of the students in those classrooms are being met and that they're able to access the curriculum in a way that um, meets their needs. The curriculum is taught in a way that's, you know, for in both a visual way and, and kind of a, you know, auditory way with the, the cards as well to accommodate for multiple learners. Um, and then the last two questions are related to previewing materials and then the opt-out option. Um, yes, parents will have the ability to preview materials ahead of time. There will be a copy of those, um, the cards that are used in those presentations in the office leading up to um, the body safety talks in the buildings. And parents will have access to preview those in, in the office. They will also have the opportunity to opt out of this program. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate that. And thank you for the survey uh, results. We are now at the... Uh, oh, I have no response to previous public comment, except to remind everybody that you'll see a lot of signs around uh, the district that say stop. Red means stop. This is a campaign that we're really pushing, please stop for the school buses when you see the arms extended. It's, um, but I won't belabor that anymore. Uh, revisions or approval of the agenda. Items can be added or deleted from the meeting agenda or from the or the order of the items may be changed at the request of an individual board member or the superintendent. The agenda must be approved before proceeding further. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the agenda as printed. Motion, Gerby. Gerby. Support Stebbins. Stebbins, thank you very much. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we have an agenda six, zero. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to approve the recommendation from the Sex Education Advisory Committee to include lessons from the body safety training curriculum for lower elementary buildings. I'll do it again. Motion, Gerby. Thank you. Support ESTEP. Support ESTEP. Thank you very much. Um, is there any discussion on this from the board? Yes. Not really a discussion, but I just want to say, um, you know, thanks for all the questions. You guys followed through with a lot of questions and answered a lot of the questions. And I, I, I really liked how the parents have access to preview them. Um, there's the opt out because anything coming out of this committee tends to kind of be found somewhat back and forth. It can be contra controversial. It can be whatever 
Um, so it's nice that the parents are involved, and you also mentioned how the curriculum does encourage, or not encourages, but parents can sit in if they wish to. So I thought that was good. Thank you very much. Um, uh, 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 Vice President Stebbins. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Um, I just wanted to thank you also for raw survey data. I'll be sure to read everything thoroughly uh, afterwards, which I'm sure everybody will be. Um, and if I have any questions or comments, I'll email Steve. Thanks. Trustee Eastup. Yeah, I'm uh, proud of the CAB, CEB committee um, for um, the work that they've done with the former committee in presenting this, and um, especially the Washtenaw um, Children's Council, <laughs> um, and you know, showing up and and being able to um, you know go through this a couple of times with us, um, and then the current um, the current board who. Um, was able to support this work as well and I just want to mention again that it wasn't necessary I don't believe to go through this process but um, you know the chairs and the district decided they wanted to do that um, to be transparent um, with the uh, community and um, I thought that was uh, really good so thank you and I can certainly plus one those comments. They, we did not have to do it, but we went above and beyond, which seems to be the Saline Area Schools way, which is great. Anything from Trustee Gold or Britt? Great, I'd like to put this to, put this, what? Time vote. Awesome, I'd like to put this to a vote, please. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay? All right, uh, we have it. Thank you very much for your time and energy and support. Appreciate it, thank you. That's another six zero vote. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the Altria Settlement Resolution accepting the settlement amount and to authorize Superintendent L Lotch to sign the settlement documents as recommended by Troon Law Firm. So moves, Debin. Support, Gold. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion on this uh, from you, uh, Superintendent Lotch? I mean, I can just give a, a little more background. If you remember back in March, we, we spoke about this uh, with a resolution and and what it would mean, ultimately, it's a little less than $25,000 after the legal fees, which are significant. Um, but um, it, it, it then does settle the jewel vaping case, so to speak. That uh, was nationwide. Anyway, that's what it is. Uh, where does this money end up landing? I mean, it goes to where we want it to land we don't have restrictions we haven't designated a place for it it will no go just in our general budget the land yeah land. it's not going into a, like a grant fund or anything like that okay. it will land back in the general fund so unrestricted thank you no other comments great i'd like to put this to a vote all in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. opposed say nay thank you very much and finally uh, i think this is finally I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, approve the recommendations of A.R. Brower to award contracts to the uh, vendors listed below on the agenda, uh, contractors listed below, in the uh, total amount of $1,271,968 for bid pack number three for the new operations center as submitted by Rex Clary, Director of Operations. Rex is out this evening on a special event with his daughter, so uh, Superintendent Lotch will answer questions on his behalf. First of all, do we have a motion? So moved. Is that Mr. Austin? Thank you. Kirby second. Kirby seconds. Thank you very much. Uh, Superintendent Lutch. It's somewhat self-explanatory in the packet. It shows uh, each section and how it was bid and uh, the various things that are needing to be addressed with the groundbreaking of the Transportation Center. Um, waterproofing, roofing, doors, um, uh, the most expensive item, the fueling station and so forth, but you can see that um, Rex has done a good job, a very good job of um, seeking these bids and working together with our owner's agent and also with A.R. Brower in securing um, cost that's actually coming un in under budget, so we feel really good about the direction of this. Great. Any comments, questions for the rest of the board? No? All in favor then, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Great. Thank you very much.
one scheduled report. We have one scheduled report from Superintendent Lodge regarding strategic planning. That didn't sound yeah. ominous. I wasn't trying to make it sound ominous. We're as close to Halloween as it gets. But it won't be scary at all. <laughs> OK, thank you, everyone. This is strategic planning. And this involves looking at enrollment. Again, I know we've talked a lot about enrollment lately. And it's also going to go into um, some of the moves the district is going to need to make over the next three years to make sure that we have the right structure moving forward. So if we look at this, this is the updated fall head count and then what we predict will play out, potentially plays out. But again, I want to point out a few things and that is that these are based on the variables that we know now and those change. So we're going to monitor this closely. But based on this information and the decline of student enrollment over the last five years, we know that we need to make some structural changes in the district because the goal is to maintain or exceed all the services we provide our students moving forward. And that needs to be the number one priority in this process. So the question we've been talking to our administrative team over the last few weeks, well, for the last year, but um, specifically over the last two weeks, we've met a few times and we've discussed that we certainly have lost uh, over 500 students in the last five years. And we haven't changed our structure. In other words, we haven't um, reduced our staff. We haven't gone through a budget reduction process. We haven't really needed to up to this point. Um, we currently still have a, a, around a 20% fund balance. However, that's going to start declining rapidly if we don't start making some structural moves. And so I want to outline some of the possibilities tonight and introduce the concept of developing a strategic planning committee that will help with that process. Yet, as we think about this, we also want to make sure that we have our district vision and goals intertwined, kind of weaved throughout the process. Because we look at this as how can we change our structure, but also make sure that our academic programming and all the things that we're trying to achieve are going to be obtainable moving forward. So we're going to look at three areas that we want to talk about while we're doing this process. The first is our compass, the Selene Area Schools compass, and our graduate profile. The second is our strategic framework, specifically four goals that have been established over the years throughout the district to uh, maintain excellence. And then the third is our MICIP, which is our school improvement and district improvement process that our teaching and learning team uh, carries out. And so just a few visuals. All right, Ben. I'm, all right, can you, yeah. The first one's the compass. The second one is four goals around the framework. And the third one, if you can go, is our MICIP um, visual that looks at this sort of cyclical process of how we need to do school and district improvement. Okay, Ben, if you can go to the next one too. So this, this slide talks a little bit about the importance of intertwining all of this work, that we can't have it be seen as four or five different objectives or four or five different strategic plans. We need to blend this together as we look at changing the structure of the district. If we go to the next one, this is just a, a bit of a rubric to show that we need to make a shift from a culture of isolation, which sometimes looks at things in silos, and more of one of collaboration a process that we will be doing over the course of the next year. Okay, and then if we go to the, all right, let's back up two slides, Ben. One more. Okay, let's go here again. Okay, so this was in our last report, but I wanna remind everybody about what are some of the key factors that do contribute to enrollment loss. These aren't the only factors, but these are some of the key ones that are impacting us now. 
significant decrease in Washtenaw County birth rate over the last 20 years. That's certainly catching up to us and many other local districts. Again, in the last presentation, I spoke about how I've had conversations with the Dexter superintendent going through a very similar process and, and needing to make adjustments in their district as well. Uh, families have more choices than ever before as to where to send their students, whether that's virtual, charter academies, private schools, homeschool, technical colleges. We're seeing some impact there as well. And then a third factor is more of a current state of affairs, and that is that with higher mortgage rates, it is harder to afford a home in, in the area. And so these are all factors that are playing out. Okay, questions to consider. One, what reconfigure, re reconfiguration opportunities exist moving forward? Now, when we say reconfiguration, we generally mean um, reconfiguring grade levels. And so, for example, what would it look like if we reconfigured one of the elementary schools to be an early childhood center? These are just questions that we will address when we are going through this process. Number two, what building schedule opportunities exist, specifically at the secondary level, to create greater efficiency while still providing excellent services for our students? So, do you, you know, currently we're on a trimester schedule at the high school. What does that look like if we go to, if we were to go to a semester schedule or even block scheduling? These are all things that we could explore. Again, explore doesn't mean we're going to do, but as we go through this process, we want to look at all of our options because, again, number one priority, providing excellent student services. The third thing, um, we've already been regularly adjusting class size at the elementary level, so we're not entertaining this idea that we're going to have excessively high class sizes at elementary. We already have some high class sizes, especially at some of the upper elementary areas. So that's not what we're talking about. But we do want to look at class size at our secondary level. And we will be doing that to determine, you know, do we need to right size some of the um, way we uh, deliver secondary instruction specifically. And then the, f the fourth thing is what I had mentioned before. As we're going through this process, how do we recenter everything and, and look at our district strategic framework? And are we still going to meet our four goals as we do this process? What about the compass? How is this best going to be supported moving forward over the next three to five years? And again, our MyKit plan, the uh, school and district improvement plans. Okay, Ben, can we move it forward one more? Okay, so some financial information that we do want everybody to know as um, in working with uh, Assistant Superintendent Owsley, these are some of the figures that we have been looking at and we're currently projecting that we're looking to reduce a million dollars from the general fund each year beginning with the following, with the next school year and do that every year over the course of the, um, these next three years. Now. I say no, we continue to update these numbers as we get more information from budget amendments, state aid, because the things we're basing this on is um, Assistant Superintendent Owsley rightfully is, is more or less saying that we're not going to have a significant increase in the per pupil foundation allowance. If that were to happen, then these numbers change. And if we were somehow to have a decrease in that, the numbers would change as well. So. When we say that we continue to look at the numbers, this is the information we have right now that we're basing on. We're also confident that we can accomplish most of these reductions through general fund reductions, including staffing, attrition, and reconfiguration. Now, staffing attrition means, more or less, that as staff leave the district, whether that's because of um, resignation, retirement, or any other reason, that we would then not hire back as many people, therefore saving money by attrition. That's what we mean by that, because we're not anticipating needing some um, broad layoff plan to achieve these results. And then finally, in speaking with our Board of Education Finance Committee, we have discussed the idea of maintaining, or the concept of maintaining between a 10 and 15% fund balance. Again, we're at a 20% fund balance right now, approximately. Yet, again, if we don't make some structural changes in the near future, over the course of the next three years in particular, 
then that 20% will quickly go between below the 10% number within two to three years. So, you know, we just want to point out that, you know, these are real numbers and we want to make sure that we are being good stewards of our money by also maintaining the fund balance that the Board of Education directs us to maintain. Okay, so the timeline. So uh, on October 17th and the 23rd, just the other day, we were meeting with administrators to get input uh, along ideas of how we can look to restructure the district. And so there are a number of ideas out there that we have now recorded. Tonight I'm presenting to all of you on October 24th. And then after this meeting, beginning in November, we're starting to put together a community strategic planning committee that will meet once a month beginning in December and go all the way through May of next spring. Uh, the committee is gonna include students, teachers, sports staff, administrators, community members, and the idea is to look at, like, like I had mentioned before, our strategic framework, the compass, the MyKIP plan, and then determine what are, some, what are some restructuring moves we could make to better serve the district, be fiscally responsible, and set the district up for success, specifically our students, moving forward. And then by the May of next year, we want to come back to the board and be able to say, here is our three-year restructuring plan, and here is how we're going to do it. And I will note this, that any possible reconfiguring or schedule changes, they're, they're, we're too late for those to happen next year. We'd be talking about the 25-26 school year at the earliest to do any of those moves. And that is it, I think, right, Ben? You fast forward, I think we're done. Okay, questions. Is anybody have any questions for me? Um, I, I, I don't know if I have more questions than some thoughts and some things I was thinking. So, um, so on behalf of finance, I want to say that I appreciate the proactive approach that we're taking on this, and I also think we're being, being pragmatic about it and, and intentional and that kind of thing. And so uh, I want to say that, you know, we want to leave it better than how we found it always, right? That's kind of a, a phrase that I think about. I may not be on this board forever, but I want to think about the long-term financial health of our, our school district in five years, 10 years, et cetera. So this, I, I do think that on behalf of the finance team, this is essential work for us. And it's something that we have to do and it's something we have to tackle. So, uh, you know, I, I, I will say that when we, we started initially discussing this, just a little bit of a brainstorm at our uh, last finance meeting, and I will tell you that, yeah, this process is going to be one that will have some some uncomfortableness with it when you when you look for options and ideas that's what they are right this doesn't mean because we put an idea on the table that's what we're doing right it just means we want to keep things in mind so that we can be good stewards of all kinds of different kinds of ideas having said that um, I'd like to, to see about your your committee um, I would like to see if it could be considered that one member of our finance team be a part of that committee as well. And not from a standpoint of, I, I, I would want one of us to be able to hear the various ideas that like our community members bring to this and our, so that then we can like bring those back to the, um, to the team of the, as a finance committee and say, look what we didn't think of, but this community member did or this administrator did, or this teacher. And so I, I just think it allows us to have a little bit of a voice and a little bit of an in-between. So please consider that. Uh, and the other thing is, um, yeah, and then the 10 to 15% that you talked about with regards to fund balance would be our goal. It's not our goal to be there like immediately. So I guess I'd wanna make sure that like, the, the public knows that we want to do this as one million, one million, one million, so that we don't see a drastic um, drop. And then the last comment I have is something that I really actually appreciate, and maybe I'm noticing for the first time, but on the head count slide, I really appreciate the bottom rectangle that refers to the prior year 12 grade 
and the new Y5K differential. Because if you look at that, it kind of paints this picture about birth rate, about the idea that we're down 96 students just from the graduating seniors and the Y5K. Am I interpreting that correctly? Yeah, that process actually has been, that pattern has been, it, that's existed for quite a while now. It's just we're not bringing in as many other kids to fill that gap anymore. Right. right. So, so I mean, we've always down. had a lower number of kindergartners right. than we do graduates. But I appreciate the inclusion of that so I can see the 101 versus the 96, right? So thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Sure. Anyone else? Oh, Susan East. Um, can you hear? I don't know. I can't really hear you when you talk. I don't know if the mic. Sorry. <laughs> How about now? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I. So I was looking at our um, current strategic plan, and this was more like focused. Um, on goal four, um, which is the fiscal responsibility piece. Um, I know um, to, to Brad's point when we did this last time, um, board members were able to kind of sit in on, on some of the meetings and so we kind of split um, that and kind of took turns or one of us found um, an area that we would be interested in. Um, but it wasn't like actual participation kind of. Um, so I'm just, when we talk about this strategic plan, um, we had four goals last time, which was, you know, focused on family, community, um, adaptive learners, um, positive school environment, um, and then the fiscal piece. So um, just in this presentation, um, are we going to also not only focus on enrollment and org changes and all of that? Are we going to put other emphasis on student um, student based uh, learning and yeah? Yeah, right. And I yeah yes for sure. And so I would use the example of well I'll go back to if we entertain or explored an early childhood center. We would want to then go back and look and determine, okay, if we were to do something like that or organize the district in that way, how would it potentially better meet the compass skills that we think are important for our kids? How would it better meet the four parameters with the strategic framework? So, right, I mean, tonight's presentation was more or less to outline the process it wasn't really trying to go into any depth with the my kit plan the compass or the strategic framework but yes we would want to structure our meetings for the planning committee to be very aware of the district vision and goals and then build around that with the reality that we do need to make some budgetary adjustments so um strategic planning so so we will keep the strategic framework so this is a kind of a different thing that you're incorporating or you're updating the framework we're not no we're not necessarily looking to go back and change the four goals of the framework we we want the committee whoever is on the committee to be aware of all of these um, components our, our compass our framework and the my kit plan so we can tie those in as we're thinking about any restructuring that we're going to do in other words we wouldn't want to be going against our vision and goals to try to save money we want to be able to support our goals and vision while saving money if, if that, yeah. That, yeah, that, that that would that, be the goal yeah that cl clears up um some items and this will before any restructuring um, will come to per policy come I believe come to the board for approval as well what right and that's a that's a ways off again yeah restru well restructuring can be that we wouldn't have as many staff based on attrition that 
in its own right might not come to the board, but if we're, yeah, if we're restructuring a building or we were gonna change the high school schedule or any of these components, we would wanna have further discussion at the board. Trustee Austin and then Trustee Gold. Um, a few things. So I don't think this is any surprise to really anybody with that, that's been following school financing over the last few years. I mean, all, not just Saline schools, but all schools have seen an increased balloon in their budget over the last few years with the COVID relief funds and so forth. So, and, and a lot of that came with things such as trying to use grants and you had to use them for special things. So when, when, when people look at the budget and they see, oh man, now we're having this drastic, we gotta make all these cuts all of a sudden, it was somewhat known that there, this was gonna have to happen. I think what, um, what I think is somewhat more surprising is we lost a lot of students through COVID we were hoping to get a lot of those students back. And we saw we saw that we did kind of balance out there. I think it was that slide showed uh, last year, we went from 100 down, 100 down, then we went to only 41 down, and now we're back down to 100 down. I think the increased competition uh, with the schools, um, all that, it's all playing a role into it. And I think with having not brought as many of the students back that we lost, I think affects the budget that much more because that's how we, Obviously, students are what's uh, what's driving the budget. So, um, I don't think it's a surprise. I think it's important that we uh, we start looking at this in depth. And and so I'm glad you're kind of looking through this right now because we have to start making changes right away. Otherwise, we will deplete that fund balance quickly. Um, what else was I gonna say? Hmm. Can't think off the top of my head now. But anyways, uh, yeah, I think the planning is important. And I think uh, it's not just our school that's facing this issue right now. I think every public school is gonna be looking at their balance sheet pretty closely right now. Trustee Gold. I guess my question is whether strategic planning or restructuring uh, consists entirely of seeking um, decreased budgets or if we also would seek to uh, enlist the committee and the community in uh, work to increase enrollment and work on the flip side of like getting more students back, working with the community on affordable real estate or doing exit interviews with families that leave. Like, is it a two part committee or is it really a strategic fr framework restructuring with the assumption that that? money is not you know recoverable that's a very good question i should have mentioned that earlier and I'll, again i'll go back could i interrupt for, uh, is your mic lit Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, um, good question. And uh, the if we look at the Early Childhood Center example, those have been found to provide um, uh, revenue generating opportunities in the future for districts. So I think it is a, it's an and that we would want the group to be thinking about restructuring from the standpoint of the reality is that some reductions do need to occur. But in the process, could we be restructuring in a way that could either bring in more students because of our programming or the value that we would create with the restructuring? Um, so that could, that could do both. It could help us reduce some costs um, by um, attrition, for example. Uh, but some of these other reconfigura re reconfiguration efforts might not be a cost savings right away, but they could be a revenue enhancing uh, move that would help in the future. I guess I was just wondering, cause we like the finance committee had asked the board about, you know, brainstorming possible sources of revenue and I like additional sources of revenue. I hear you and I am not like being Pollyanna about the fact that cuts will need to be made, that there's reality involved, but I'm just wondering, are we going to seek this committee's input on beyond an early childhood center on some of the other strategies that were discussed or you know maybe people have other ideas about how to better market 
or is that happening in a different place in a different framework and in terms of like how to either better market bringing students in better keeping students using buildings or for other money making these are all things that I've heard said and are are we using this committee as part of that or would that really be kind of under a separate umbrella no that, that could all happen together yeah, it, it, I, again, I just gave one example of the revenue, but okay. right, we also, as administrators, have, have had discussions about, you know, if you opened up a virtual academy, that could potentially be a money maker in, in the sense that, you know, you develop a virtual programs and then you market it to students all over the state. I mean, so the point is, is yes, this committee can help with ideas of revenue generation, but I do think it's important that we think about not one time money revenue ideas that that it's you know we're not just on a campaign to you know raise fifty thousand dollars one time it would need to be well if we created a new stream of advertising we could count on a hundred thousand dollars in additional revenue every year moving forward that would be a structural change So, like, and I, I, I want to speak to that because we have had conversations as a, as a committee with revenue, but some t what we, I think, generally came to the consensus of was that a couple of things. Number one is that some of our, like, revenue-generating ideas would have been spreading our administrators, our leadership, our team, too far and so like how much do we want to take their focus away from buildings and classrooms and that and we just didn't feel and please speak up if you feel differently from you like we had some ideas and they were good ideas but we just at the time didn't implement them because we felt that they weren't worth the trade-off if you will right now if we come up with some bigger ideas like I, I could tell you that this is a tremendous um, you know stress of 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 Vice President Stevens, she, and she's good at it. Uh, but and so like this is something that she's constantly talking at the committee table about. And so like we'll we'll keep generating those ideas, but it's got to be something that has a lot of worth for the time. You know what I'm saying? That we ask of our people. So that also has kind of limited us or, or or stopped us a bit. Oh, just real quick, um, because I know we're surveying like doing this whole exit study, and later we're gonna talk about um, school of choice, and you know that, that also um, would be a strategy of why are people coming here to Celine and how to get them to move here, really. <laughs> um, so, so as far as like, you know, making revenue and stuff, that, that, that just came to my mind, so. Vice President Stebbins. So I have quite a few, <laughs> quite a few reflections. The first thing I would do is um, amplify a word that Steve used in the presentation about exploration. So these are beginning conversations, and so appreciate that. No decisions being made on any of these ideas. They're just spaghetti at the wall um, as examples, so I would amplify that. Um, secondly, I would echo what Brad said about adding a finance committee team member, but I would say I think all three of us should be on this. This is one of the biggest things um, in addition to the bond that we would have had on our plates. So I'd very much like all of us to be involved. Um, I really appreciate that Lauren brought up revenue generation and the flip side and being positive because I do think that the conversations in the finance committee were stalled. Um, I think we should get back to those. I hear what Brad's saying, but I think not all ideas put burden on staff or administration, and I think that we should um, partner with the Foundation for Selene Area Schools to get creative about different things. Um, I think that they should definitely be involved in the Strategic Planning Committee, minimally their treasurer, um, so we have finance from both sides. Um, I think that that's good. And then Susan, I heard you ask a question about um, the May timeline with regards to um, moving forward and would we approve it or whatnot, the board approves the budget, so yes. So I would ask that the, the, um, the phrasing there is announced. It, it's a little bit more is presented, I guess I would say, because the budget, if we're, if we're cutting one million over, um, rolling up to three over three years, that's a budget approval process, which is a function of the Board of Education, so I think that that answers your question or no? 
I, I was more thinking about like restructuring of staffing. Um, yeah, staffing would be Steve. If yes, but if there's a reorg change, it's supposed to come to and the eliminating board. line items for like personnel on the budget. Do you mean? No, re restructuring the entire like admin team or um, okay building levels that's supposed to come to us. Great. Well, thank you very much. I just wanted to add uh, to uh, everything that's been said so far. I appreciate everybody's rapt attention that I'm fascinated to hear how many stakeholder groups you're going to be approaching to be on this committee for this, this extended conversation. And it is a very heavy lift. And I appreciate that. I'm not really sure. We may end up in make, they may end up making recommendations that we did not expect, which is what we expect from the communi community. I did want to say, um, just last week, St. Paul, Minnesota opened up a budget uh, committee and brought in all sorts of members of the community, and uh, that was heralded as a remarkable thing. So here we are doing doing that just as a casual, this is what we do, again, in Saline. So I appreciate your efforts on that and bringing as many voices to the table as possible. Thank you very much, Mr. Lodge, Superintendent Lodge. Because we are missing one member of uh, our team tonight, Jenny Miller, uh, the board policy committee meeting update, which was held earlier today, will be summarized by you, uh, Susan Estep. Thank you very much, Trustee Estep. Sure. Um, so we are um, doing our we go. Um, so our second reading of policy one one three school of choice program in our district. Um, and so this would be the, the second reading. Um, and uh, Jenny had mentioned um, that she had been contacted um, with some language modifications and um, said, as it should be, um, that it could be brought um, to the board um, here during the discussion um, if there's, so, you know, we, we can vote on it if there, you know, um, aren't changes, um, but if there's any um, in discussion that uh, any proposed changes um, are suggested, we can talk about that. Just to clarify, do you mean talk about here tonight at this table? Yes. Okay. Were there any other things that were discussed at the? Uh, oh, so oh, so um, there's two things, right? Oh, sorry, I was going to number two. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's for number two. I've already explained that. Um, so yes, today we went over NEOLA updates and um, there was a couple that we had um, just a couple questions about that we'll go back um, to NEOLA uh, for uh, to be questioned. And then we have a lot of policies that we are going to request um, that come to the board um, for discussion um, and approval. Um, Did you want to add anything? I was just curious about the dates, the timing. So we're hoping to put these on the agenda for a future yeah, meeting, I, early November. Or I'll, I'll let um, Betty and uh, Jenny communicate that with. All you. right. Thank you very much. I think we need to meet with the Neola representative to have some clarifying questions, and so I don't think we would know to tell you when to put it on the next agenda. Do and my last question, as as the the president here, is: uh, Do you plan on having any further uh, policy committee meetings this uh, calendar year? We didn't discuss it, but there's a couple of items that we haven't gotten to, so um, I, I think we put a November one out already. I think we will probably meet in November. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I great. Good to know. Um, so I can't say congratulations and well done this uh, calendar year for all your work. It, it, it isn't over yet. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So that does bring us now to our discussion of policy 5113, School of Choice Program, the interdistrict, and uh, 
and recommended updates. This is the second reading of this policy, which is basically an inclusion of one line. But um, and since again, since uh, 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 Secretary Miller is not here, uh, someone's going to be managing this. Would that be you again? The rest Trustee of the Easton? policy committee. Yes. The rest of the policy <laughs> committee will will facilitate the discussion. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I, I kind of um, covered that piece um, already, um, kind of with uh, Jenny and what she communicated um, with us about, you know, discussion here if um, there were more uh, proposed revisions or anything that we can bring to the table or concerns we could talk about. Great. Well, let's open the floor then to yep. uh, comments, concerns, quibbles, questions, queries, all those things. I think I was the one that... that Jenny was talking about with the ideas. So I, the 10%, um, you know, this, the cap to, or the, it's not the cap, it's a strive to get, to maintain approximately 10%. It's, you know, n n I would like to see a cap. And um, so some of the things I heard, you know, taking into consideration the fluctuation in the student count, you know, so that's hard to, to manage sometimes with a cap. Um, the, uh, I think it's important that we need to protect the students that are already here by school of choice. And so some of the thoughts I had were to um, add a couple letters. So like E would then be, Selene Area Schools has a 10% school of choice cap. With the constant fluctuation of enrollment, if a school of choice student, if the school of choice students are higher than 10% in the prior school year, no additional school of choice students can be accepted until we fall below the 10% cap. This just kind of strengthens this policy. We'd have F would be then if Selene Area Schools has, is over the 10% school of choice cap, all existing already accepted school of choice students will remain in the school of choice program and not lose their spot. And then G would be the superintendent shall be responsible for developing and promulgating administrative guidelines to implement this policy. I think this, these two E and F help the student or the superintendent create the policy or the administrative guidelines, and these are I think are important to have in there versus the word strive, um, because let's face it, we just came off the uh, strategic framework study there, and when we start talking about students, it's going to be easy to say, eh, let's bend a little here, let's bend a little there, and this also then creates it more we as a board and or future boards also realize what 10% means. It's not 10.5, it's not 11. It might be 10.5 for a year until we can go back, get below 10%. And, you know, so there's some wiggle room in this, but yet it helps give us some teeth to the administrative guidelines so that we as a board understand what we should vote for and what we shouldn't vote for, as well as... Um, still protecting the school of choice students that are here. So that, those are my ideas. I appreciate that. Uh, if I could add on to, or see clarification. So what I'm hearing you say is you're, first of all, I appreciate that you're saying once the student's here, let, they're here. We're not going to carve them out or send them back up to wherever they came from. Uh, they, they're here once they've gotten into the program. I and I appreciate that. So the other thing I'm hearing is Let's say the superintendent has strived to get 10%, but it's gone to 10.5, because as we know, en enrollments change and, and so forth, and I get that. Uh, so what you're s I'm hearing you say is that the following year, the goal, let's say 10.5, the following year then the superintendent will strive for 9.5 in order to keep it at around 10% still. Th th uh, and that's something that we will be observing as a board or approving. Yeah, so basically, so if, if one year we, we accept a school of choice per the superintendent's recommendations, and then we, let's say we lose more students than we thought, so we, we right. jump up kind of like where we're yeah. at right now. So we're, let's say we're at 10.5. The following year, we aren't going to be accepting school of choice students because we're over 10%. Now, if Steve can come here and make the case, or the superintendent can make the case that, hey, we're, we had in, this, in the graduating class, there were 50 students, school of choice students. So that's now going to bring us under the 10%. We have room to take on 30. 
that's the case you'd have to make to, uh, to the well, board. Well, and that's part, uh, and to, to back and forth here, that's uh, sort of what n number E already says, that the superintendent is responsible for developing the administrative guidelines to suit that. And, and again, sort of keep that as a target. I guess the, the way I'm hearing it from you, because I don't have it written in front of me, but it sounds like you're saying we won't accept any school of choice. Like, the, the, the basically, you're saying we close the program. Is, did I hear that correctly? I, yeah, if we're if over, we're, if we're going to be over ten percent, then yeah, we won't accept any that year. Kay. That's where I. That's where I, you've lost me because I, mathematically, that's why I'm saying ten, if we're over, then the next year we just aim for under, so that we always have in this district around ten percent. But if you, but if we close, if I, no, am I understanding it right? No, I, so I guess a, a question I have is maybe will help with clarity. Is that 10%, sorry, 10% <laughs> counting, um, is it like every year we accept 10% or are we counting the current, adding the current school of choice numbers in? Is that, okay. So like we regularly have a certain percentage already. Like if, for example, if we ha are, have a consistent 8%, I'm throwing num just numbers, um, we would be accepting 2% new ones. Okay. Perhaps you could clarify it, Dr. Lutch, I, from your I perspective. Can, I think I can clarify what Tim is, or uh, Trustee Austin is proposing. Basically, the current situation is we're at like 10.4%. So if next year um, we cannot demonstrate that any of the seniors who will graduate from here are yeah, I mean, I think I actually think your example was pretty clear. If 50 kids are graduating next year, 50. And as they exit, then I would then say, well, now that means we only have 9.7% of the kids in the district or school of choice. Therefore, in me guessing what enrollment would be next year, we could take 20 or 30 students, but we wouldn't be able to take the normal 70, which is sort of traditionally what we take between 60 and 70, because if we did take that normal amount, we'd get over 10%, and, right? I mean, I'm just. So the, so the tricky part in the mathematics or the arithmetic here is that the school of choice, the lottery happens in May before we even have a student count. So. We really, that's why it's a hard target to meet because you're doing it blind in, a, in effect. Yeah, I guess, I guess we're, this makes it clear and then therefore it can be in the administrative guidelines is that if, if the senior classes were at 10, let's say we're at 10.5 and then the senior classes there's only 20 exiting. And so based on the numbers, that's gonna leave us at 10.2. Well, we're not gonna accept any the following year. So, um, Lauren, would you like to go? Oh, I uh, remain in favor of leaving flexibility. Uh, I think if they're siblings, uh, that should be can taken into consideration because if you protect, if you say, okay, well, we're not going to, you know, if you start in third grade, you stay. But what if there's three little siblings behind, then some years, one sibling, no one's going to want to come if they have some chance that they have three or four kids and there's some chance that one year we're going to take. I mean, I know... I think that's always a little bit of a risk, but this seems like it will make it even a bigger risk. Um, and I just think also word gets out in the community. If there's some years you take 30 and some years you take 70, I mean, if it's really that back and forth based on how many kids graduate every year, I think people will probably stop applying. I, it just seems to like, in my mind, having that kind of limit on it so hard and fast without allowing the superintendent's discretion is going to be detrimental to the program, which it seems to me like if we're worried about declining enrollment, I hear Trustee Austin's concerns about sort of, you know, prioritizing the kids who live here, but I, I may be somewhat biased in that we started as a school of choice family for like four months as we were looking to buy a house in Celine. And it helped us buy a house here. And I had three kids in the district and now sit on the school board. Like, you know, I mean, I sat in that position. And 
I think it's a reasonable program. And I think trying to like, like President McVeigh said, decide having that strong of a limit, I just think that the possible risks outweigh the possible gain. And it just seems a little bit like semantics um, to me. Uh, and also the sibling thing just as I, I think could become very difficult. Any other comments? Oh, I'm trying to facilitate. <laughs> I'll go, I'm fast. Um, I, I agree with what Lauren said, and, and I don't have a problem with the language in the document, and I think that the presentation that came before this um, necessitates more flexibility towards Steve and, and Tim, I totally try to seek to understand why the 0.4 or 0.5 percent is is a little bit more of a game changer for you um, because I'm not seeing it, but um, always interested in your viewpoint. But right now, I, I don't have a big problem, and I think that more flexibility is a good thing. I, d I don't think Celine ever, when it was first intended, and I don't believe now, Celine, Celine ever wanted to use this as a way to generate revenue. It was always a way to just kind of backfill or smooth over a class or whatnot. So I think that is why the 10% cap was that. And honestly, it, we've never really been close to the 10% cap until recently as we started losing our own students. And I think, to me, it puts more of an onus on us keeping our own students here. And that is important to me. Thank, thank you for that. I agree with keeping our own students is important. I, I guess I would be like, yes, and. <laughs> so f flexibility and also some good ideas I heard in the previous conversation about exit interviews or, or trying to retain those students. I like that as well. Trustee Kirby? Yeah. Um, I, would like, I just would say that I'm, I'm supportive of the language as currently written here as well. Um, you know, the enrollment is fluid, right? And it, it can be a challenge and it can be a challenge in a situation where, we, you know, we just talked about we're graduating to enrolling a differential of 96. Well, what if that differential was 87? What if that differential was 110? What if it's so like if we cap, then like Michael said earlier, it makes it harder for us to, to go ahead and, and make predictions. And if we're going to be good stewards about our budget and trying to come up with a budget on July 1st, then for me, then having some ability for our superintendent to make those decisions based upon the information he thinks is most prudent. And I think he's making an effort to stay near 10%. So to me, this language supports him and what he's already doing. And so I, I support the language as is currently written here. Well, I, thank you. What, what I'd like to ask the policy committee is be, if you are going to meet again, which is great, and not meeting again until January was kind of put a crimp on things, but I'd like to see the language that you're proposing. I think you just read it to us, but I kind of want to dwell on it and think about it because uh, and consider it, all right, because I want to show respect to what you're what you came up with. And I guess we'll leave it to the policy committee. I don't know if you're going to be, we leave it up to your recommendation as to whether we keep this as it is. I recommend that we vote if we feel there's a consensus. All right, well so, then that will so happen at, the n at a future meeting then. It's the second reading. This is the second reading. reading, so we usually. So we can vote if the language isn't changing. Okay, well. We didn't change it after the first reading either. Well, I'm noticing that it's not an action item, so that's what uh, that's why I was uh, a little bit confused. But on we that. can take action on any item. Mm, okay. Oh, did you want to? Are there one? Yeah. No, it's just an action, like. You. You are welcome to make a motion. At this point, then, have you ended your facilitation, and then we're going to move into a motion on this? Uh, yeah, whoever. Yeah. All right. Do we have a motion to approve this um, revision to the policy 5113? I will make a motion to approve the revision to 
the policy. Garby second. The two G's, Gold, Garby. So uh, this is an opportunity then, since this we have a motion on the floor, one last opportunity to speak in favor or opposed to the motion. Uh, anyone want to take a shot at it? All right. Well, then we'll put it to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I, oh, aye. One nay. I, and, well, and one nay, that's right. So we have a five, one, zero. All right, thank you very much. And um, and I do appreciate the conversation. This has been an interesting uh, interesting exploration of arithmetic in the board, for sure. <laughs> Oh, apparently I'm next. Um, we are now looking, if you could draw your attention to uh, page 25 of the packet. Uh, we're, this is a quick chance for a discussion in case we missed anything regarding next year's calendar of, of uh, uh, meetings. We have 19 meetings scheduled. As I was looking through, we saw that March 26th, the, sec the third Tuesday, sorry, the, the fourth Tuesday in March happened to be during spring break. I asked Dr. Lotch if it would be uh, difficult to have just a single meeting that March, and the answer was <laughs> no. So, well, not quite in that term, but uh, in that tone. But it looks now we have um, the schedule. So I'd like to open this up for a very brief discussion to see if there's anything we may have missed. And next uh, meeting, we'll take a quick vote on approving this. In fact, it may end up in the consent agenda if it's a pretty short putt. Any comments on the, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Have we missed I, any, I had one any I special did. holidays? Or I had to do this one last year. So. Um, and, and by the way, March 26 is uh, taken off because of Brad Gerby's birthday, apparently. Is that correct? Actually, June. Uh, oh, June. That's uh, right. We only have one meeting in June because of your birthday. Right. Yes, uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Vice President Stebbin, you, I, I um, stepped on your line. No, that's okay. Um, so we did remove March this year when we approved and created it last year. So that's, that's um, precedent. Um, I hope that everyone has a restful spring break. Um, the only other thing to consider, and I see that we only have one one day here uh, in the month of November, and I would I would agree with that, is uh, we only had one this year as well, and it's because the school is closed right before uh, the Thanksgiving, the American Thanksgiving holiday, um, to Michael. Um, so I checked the calendar, and it would have fallen on the 26th, and I think that is Thanksgiving week, so that was a good removal as well. So it looks good. Um, just I'd edit the text. Please take notice because it has the 2023 dates in there. The paragraph. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. So you got that uh, recording, Secretary Yonke. So Great. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Trustee um, Miller last year, Secretary uh, Vice President Miller brought it. Oh, sorry, Secretary Miller brought it up last year about being butted up. The last meeting in November being butted up. I think Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving, and that seemed to work really well. So thank you. Yes, uh, Trustee Step. So clarity. So we are, you are suggesting not to meet the twenty sixth of March during spring break. Yes, because we'd be the only ones in the district. Okay, so that will come off of this. That's correct. Okay, thank you. I think it was just left there as a note for us to 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 see this. And okay. Some have wondered why we have the same uh, place uh, repeated all the way through. There was a year when uh, the buildings were under construction that we had our meetings in a number of different locations. So just, just to point that out, we can change the location. All right, well, thank you very much. Then we'll call, unless there's something else. And please take a look at your own personal calendars and, and special events calendars just to see if we missed anything. And we'll probably drop this into the consent agenda next meeting. Thank you. Um, Speaking of administration slash board updates, Dr. Lodge. So tomorrow night, we're looking forward to Trunk or Treat in uh, over by Key Bank in the downtown area. We'll be participating for Salinary Schools. Uh, I also wanted to point out that how we're doing with bus drivers, you're still seeing periodic route cancellations, but it's not because we're not onboarding new drivers, we are. Um, Kurt and HR and Rex and the team have been successful in getting more applicants and more people onboarded. It just takes a while to get them onboarded where they actually can drive by themselves, basically. So um, we're hopeful in the near future that those route cancellations continue to decline. But I just wanted to um, let everybody know that there's some positive news in that area in terms of getting more drivers onboarded. 
Uh, and then uh, as we saw from recognizing the football team tonight, this is a new um, sort of the superintendent's recognition that we wanna do before each board meeting. And so we also are gonna need uh, everybody's help in determining who we should be honoring. We look at the um, honoring, you know, uh, SEC champions because we have a lot of success with our athletic teams, but also when our music programs have accomplishments at their festivals or First Robotics does something well, Science Olympiad, our clubs and organizations, debate club. So we actually are going to want people to bring it to our attention as we're trying to keep track of all of it. Betty in particular is going to be keeping a list and then we're gonna be inviting uh, groups in to be honored and it really is time to just honor them and uh, recognize their achievement um, without having some sort of presentation beyond what I would be you know commenting on like I did for the football team tonight so I just wanted to um, point that out and seek your input moving forward with that thank you very much rather than going up and down the table I'll just let anyone speak up who feels the need actually after the students go um, so tomorrow, the link crew leaders during lunch, we're doing trunk or treat for the freshmen. So we all get to dress up and go outside and do a little um, Halloween activity. So that's something I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And along with Halloween, I'm looking forward to Halloween. I can't wait to get candy That's kind of the best. and hand it out and see everybody in their costumes. And hopefully soccer won tonight. They didn't? No. I don't know, but that was, it was a good <laughs> run. But also, water polo has made it to their second regionals in the second year in a row, which is pretty impressive. And if anybody's got hockey skates and wants to try for the hockey team, come October 30th. <laughs> Do board members get special uh, consideration? Nice. No, free to, to, to be on the team. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no. Okay, pass. Yeah, back to All right, All right Treasurer Gerby. I got a few things. Um, number one, I, uh, I want to give a shout out. We talked about transportation just now to our, um, our superintendent for, for stepping up and driving a bus. I heard you were subbing in classrooms. I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Um, I also want to say, after our last meeting, somebody else that I'm incredibly thankful and mindful that, you know, I always give out shout outs to, you know, Miranda and, 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 and Kara Davis, right, as a leader for our instructional design team, as our instructional team. Um, she, her contributes coordinating PD, engaging in the improvement process, leading departments through curriculum reviews. Like, I see the work that Kara Davis is doing in this school district, and I am incredibly grateful for it. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Principal Hughes for, for also sharing about a, another elementary school. I dig that. I, I assume that's intentional and that they're doing that, and I just love hearing about our individual buildings and what is happening in them and all of that. So I will tell you that I am really, really excited about those updates. Um, I am grateful. My son was a, a member of, of the soccer team, and so real quickly, I just want to say how much I appreciate the culture of soccer, how much I appreciate the coaching staffs, the players, the parents, the people that are involved with that, because it's such a good thing for my, my kids to be involved with. So I, I'm thankful for that. Um, Caroline over here was too nice to herself and too humble. She should be congratulated for the field hockey team and the incredible things that they are doing in their current state uh, playoff run. And we are hopeful to, you know, beat Pio and, and to, to make that thing happen. So I want to I wanna give a shout out to her because she didn't give herself one. Um, and that is all. And I'm just always grateful to have my children in the Saline Area Schools. And Thank you very much, Treasurer Gerby. Anyone? Okay. Um, yes, I was really pleased that Kenyatta came by today to talk a little bit about the goings on at Pleasant Ridge. I know Laura was just here. It's lovely to hear about all the buildings. I, I really missed being able to go on the building visits because of work. So um, appreciate them coming to us. Um, that building is the reason I'm on the Board of Education. Um, I got to have two years with Brad Bizu and two years with Kevin Musson. And um, everyone in that building, the children, the families, and the staff are absolutely excellent and um, I hope that 
every um, family in the district has has as good of an experience as I did because um, it was a lovely place to grow up. Um, I know we recognized our, our fabulous SEC champions tonight. Um, thank you, Brad, for talking a little bit about Caroline and some of the other ones. Um, there's a lot of good ha things happening in athletics, so we recognize them all and also recognize all of our other clubs and, and other students that have a lot of wonderful accomplishments. I see the band all over the place. Um, I've been really enjoying the various senior nights um, for our various sports and marching band and things like that, so shout out to all of our seniors. Um, and when I was reading my board packet, I, I glanced at the uh, approval of field trips, and I'm going to give our Celine Middle School cross-country team a shout-out, Sandy Stafford and team, going to nationals for the third time in a row. Um, and that's an incredibly um, special program, and best of luck to them on the 17th of November when they head back to Kentucky. And so that would be my suggestion for a future shout out if you're looking for another group to come uh, and be praised in front of the Board of Education. Thank you. Go Hornets. Yeah, pretty quick. Just uh, driving here today thinking about all the uh, athletics and field hockey, soccer, cross country. They're, they're starting regionals I think this week. And I think Saturday. Saturday. Yep. And uh, then the football team. And, you know, so, yeah, just just an amazing athletic program here in Saline. And then also, yes, thanks, Steve, for uh, stepping up and doing the bus driving. I mean, that was that's a that's quite the uh, thing. Good job. Uh, a year before you got back on the board, we had a presentation from the athletics and somebody called us the, the University of Saline or something like that. We had so many sports programs going. Not Celine State University, the yeah. University of Celine. That, that one's especially for a couple of people. Looking down the far end of the table, nothing, nothing? All right. Oh, oh yeah. I do. <laughs> I do have something. Um, so um, this past weekend, my family traveled to Pennsylvania where my wife, Dr. Ann Jeffers, was awarded the Trinity High School 2023 Distinguished Alumni Award. She received this prestigious award with three other awardees. She, she's the youngest that's ever received it. Um, we were given a tour of uh, their high school by one of their student leaders. Um, it was pink out and she had these wonderful pink high heels and my daughters thought she looked like Barbie. <laughs> So we got to spend the evening with her, and um, she kept my uh, daughter's uh, attention. So, um, you know, we were able to, to do everything. Um, so we were given a tour of the high school, which was really cool um, to see where my wife went to high school and where her parents met. Um, and uh, they gave us um, a wonderful reception and um, was recognized at the football game. Um, I say this because I, you know, I already appreciate um, the foundation um, and their Hall of Fame, and so this was kind of a, you know, a, I guess a different, um, being in a different side of it, like I, I just appreciate that, um, you know, we, we do have our inductees, and um, I just thought it was a really, really cool experience, um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we do that for um, our alum, so. Um, and then also, um, and congratulations to my wife. <laughs> um, also, we had a diversity, equity, and inclusion advisory um, committee meeting um, last week. And um, earlier in the week, um, we, so uh, co-chair, uh, Ms. Washington, and um, Dr. Lotch, and um, Trustee Miller, um, we all sat down and looked at the new applications that, that were submitted um, and the ones that are on file for, kept on file for two years. And um, we, we um, recommended, uh, I think it was seven or eight people to, to fill the committee. Um, but it sounds like some of our administrate more administrators will be um, jumping in um, as well um, to make things more transparent uh, on the advisory committee. So uh, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Um, if you are ever running a tour through the schools and you need someone to stick, you know exactly what I'm going to say, uh, Kara Davis. 
and you need someone to stick to a schedule, ask Kara Davis to come with you. I just wanted to say thank you very much for the great tours that we had. Uh, Dr. Gold and I went, uh, and uh, uh, Jenny Miller joined us as well. Superintendent Lotch was there for a bit of it. It was wonderful to see the kids. It was wonderful to see the program. And the, uh, Doc, uh, Kara Davis was beaming with pride at various points throughout, and well-deserved pride, and I, I do appreciate the tours. We're taking another few next week. On uh, oh no, on November, early November, on uh, election day, Seven. November seventh. That's election day still. Yeah, um, I was in Lansing all day Friday, a very long day on the governmental relations committee, uh, seeking to approve or support various bits of legislation, working their way through the system that were related to schools. And oh my gosh, to see that sausage being made. It, have you ever heard that phrase before about you know you, you don't want to see the sausage being made? It is. It is. It is a fascinating, fascinating experience, and I hope somebody else will take over that spot uh, from me next year and, and have that same experience. But we have, we're, we're, we're starting to gel as a group and understand each other. These are school board members, about 20 of us from all over the state, from the UP and one end to Detroit and the other, and it's just fascinating. Anyway, uh, last thing I wanted to say was, um, Oh, also, uh, some, some of us attended the uh, little activity that was put on by the alternates of high school a few days back, and uh, this is my second time doing it, and it's a lot of fun. It's a great experience for some of those young people. We're going to move on, unless there's somebody else, to the consent agenda. Um, the, the agenda listed here will not be read aloud. The motion noted will allow for the authorization of all listed items without discussion, unless a member of the board requests that any one or all be considered individually. I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to authorize the consent agenda as printed. So moved, Stebbin. Stebbin. Second, Gold. Gold, thank you very much. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great, 6-0, thank you very much. Uh, closing <laughs> items scheduled on the next agenda, Dr. Lodge. Primary item next week, or next uh, meeting in November is the Plant Moran Audit. Oh, right, and we are moving that as requested as early in the agenda as possible. Um, next, uh, public comment. Are there any, is there any public comments? Tonight? Two for two, that is remarkable, but uh, that, that means I've, I've lost the bet as to when the meeting was going to end. The next meeting will be held on November 14th, uh, 2023 at 6.30. I'm sorry? I'd like... <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting at 7.59. Kirby. Kirby. <laughs> Second, Stubborn. Stubborn. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank aye. you very much. And then I get to gently tap twice. Congrats, Stubborn. Yeah, that's really cool. It's not a, it's not a record. <laughs>